All right, so I thought I'd sort of get on this quickly because a lot is happening right now with DeepSeek, with China, with AI, and just wanted to spend some time trying to break things down and explain a little bit about what's happening, not just from the macro level, but also figuring out what's the story behind DeepSeek, what are they building, and why is it causing a fuss with everyone, the stock market and everything in between. I want to go through everything in just a few minutes and why this is a good thing and not a bad thing. Let me explain. So basically, let's go through what happened first. So on January 27th, 2025, one trillion dollars of value was wiped from the stock market, mostly targeted at US tech stocks. And this caused ripple effects through Nvidia and Microsoft. All of these have a big, big influence in the AI space, but also influences with OpenAI, which is basically the leading contender in AI models. And this was basically where we saw OpenAI finally being taken over by a competitor. And in this case, it was DeepSeek. So let's try and understand what is DeepSeek first. Now, DeepSeek is a company, it's a Chinese startup. And what they did in the past couple of weeks was release a model. And this model is called R1, just in the same way that OpenAI released their 4O model. This is the equivalent of that for DeepSeek. So DeepSeek's the company and they released an R1 AI model. So this is the latest and greatest. And apparently it looks like from the benchmark testing and performance testing that it performs on par or even in some cases better than OpenAI's model, Meta's Llama model, Google's model. So this is pretty crazy. And the even crazier thing here is that it built this in a fraction of the cost that these incumbents like OpenAI used to build their own models. It cost, I think, around $6 million. And OpenAI, Meta, they all invested hundreds of millions of dollars and even billions of dollars in some cases to build their models. Now, this is basically the release of DeepSeek. If you go to their GitHub page, this is exactly what you'll see on their front page. Now, the question that everyone wants to know is who is DeepSeek? Who's behind this company? Now, unfortunately, there's little information about who the founders are, what they're actually uh, the founding team, you know, the backstory. But what we do know so far, and I think this will unravel itself over time, is that it was founded in 2023. So this is DeepSeek was founded in 2023 by a hedge fund called High Flyer. So apparently they wanted to figure out exactly, you know, how how stocks were performing and they wanted to predict the market. So they wanted to use AI to help with that. But the side project itself started in 2021. This was crazy to think about. It was a side project by the founder of the hedge fund called Liang Wang Feng. And basically, this guy wanted to just figure out, okay, how can I predict the markets? That's basically his ultimate goal. That was his goal. And then, you know, this is an excerpt from Fortune magazine. And he says, quote, Liang Wengfeng's quant trading hedge fund High Flyer uses artificial intelligence to predict market trends and help make investment decisions. In 2021, he started buying thousands of NVIDIA chips as part of an AI side project that launched DeepSeek in 2023. It just goes to show that this little tiny side hustle project became this massive disruptive company that's now giving OpenAI a run for its money. Now, the ultimate question here is why is this getting so much attention? Like, why is it making the news? Why is it making headlines? Why is Trump even speaking about this as well? Well, I think it's fair to say that this model basically compares, as I mentioned before, on par with the current models that we know of today. But the thing is that it's actually more efficient, it's more faster, it's more cheaper. And this was trained on the NVIDIA chips. But here's the thing. So NVIDIA has two types of GPUs that are basically used in today's world in training these AI models. You've got basically the H100. So this is the latest and greatest AI chips that are being used by OpenAI's, your Google's, your Meta's of the world. And then you have the H800s. This is sort of the, the, the previous generation, the much more older generation of GPU chips that are only accessible in China because I think because previously there was an embargo on H100s being imported into China. So there was a sanction against China so that they could only access 
H-800s, but it is arguable that perhaps they do have access to H-100s as well, but hasn't been made public yet. But in any case, if this is true, it goes to show that this DeepSeq R1 model is being trained on something much more, more efficient and much more cheaper than all the models we know of today. Now, the other thing that they released, this is now, this is converted from Mandarin, is High Flyer also released a blog on some of the optimizations they did. So they're using base models like Llama 3 as their sort of their foundation model, but then they've optimized that based on GPU parallel processing and a lot of other optimizations on top that have, a, that have sort of given them the edge that has allowed them to basically build this model on cheaper hardware in less time with less money as well. I highly recommend you read through this because it's really interesting how they describe their architecture and their approach to doing this. This is also interesting here. This is the performance benchmark. So you can see you know, time and time again, there's equivalence here. There are key comparisons being made between DeepSeq R1 and OpenAI's O1 model as well. And you can immediately tell they're on par and then some even being performing a little bit better than O1 as well. But here's the kicker. It's actually open source. And I think this is the game changer. I think this is the one reason why this is getting so much attention. So let me explain. Open source means that anyone can basically download this. They can use it at their own discretion. They can use it for whatever they want. It's globally accessible. So it's public for anyone to download. But it also means that closed models have no more moat. So all the models like Google's Gemini model or OpenAI's GPT models, they don't have a moat anymore. And you can see here, this is on public on GitHub. So anyone, you can download this right now and look at the open source code. But here's another reason why open source is really powerful here. You can actually run it locally on your own machine. So this means that it's free to download. And so here's basically an image of what you can download based on the number of parameters, the larger the number of parameters, the larger the size. But what it's saying here is that you can go ahead and download this straight to your own machine, which means that it's not dependent on paid services like your open AIs anymore. And it democratizes AI development, which means that anyone can come in now and build on top of the open source model. So let me show you why this is really, really important. In the old world right now, this is you, or me, and there's maybe a company there or a startup, for example, and they want to use LLM models. They want to use AI for their own purposes, for their own applications. So what they'll do is that they'll talk to OpenAI, they'll connect with OpenAI, they'll pay OpenAI to use their model. And this is basically the, the traditional path that we have right now. The problem with this is that it's owned and controlled by OpenAI and it's also paid. So you're basically giving money to basically use a service that these guys are providing to you, which means they have full control of everything. But the new world with DeepSeq and R1 and subsequent models like this is that because DeepSeq is now fully open source, you can get the benefits of DeepSeq and these types of AI models within your own computer. It's under your control, you own it entirely, and it's completely free. Uh, this completely changes the game because now what you have is full ownership of the model. The fact that you can download it on your own machine and test it is crazy. So what happens next? I think first and foremost, the AI race has officially started. DeepSeq R1 has shown the world that the US is not potentially the leading candidates right now for AI supremacy. The Chinese have certainly proved themselves now. And it goes to show that the bar has been raised. So right, anything right now is table stakes. And OpenAI and all the others now have to meet that benchmark of what DeepSeq has already put out there. But also, as I mentioned, open source is the future. The fact that models like this exist and it's open source has torn down all the competitive walls and moats that all of these companies have had. And it means that companies like you, or if you're an entrepreneur or you're a founder and you're a startup and you, you are building something that's AI focused, that uses models like GPT-4.0, you can now use DeepSeq as an alternative. 
and it's going to be free. It's going to be much more efficient. You can run it locally on your own cloud on AWS or on Azure or whatever it may be. And that's game changing. So I really think that this is going to help a lot of startups, a lot of enterprise companies who want to start experimenting with AI themselves and not having to pay through their nose for open AI's models. And it's going to help universities and students learn how these AI models work and potentially improve them for the future. So as I said at the beginning, I think this is really good for the future of AI. I think this is going to really change the game and disrupt the space. So yeah, watch this space. This is really interesting to see. I hope you liked it. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe, like it, and I'll see you next time.